we have arrived at our last nodal analysis example. This example incorporates all of the complexity that we need to deal with uh, for being able to apply nodal analysis to any uh, electric uh, linear circuit. We now have a modified circuit from the previous one we worked where the voltage source has been moved from being grounded here in place of the 5 volts, uh, 5 ohm resistor, and it has now been placed uh, across the top bridging node 1 and 3, uh, replacing the, uh, the 20 ohm resistor. So um, let's see what's different now. Uh, recall that in the previous example, when the voltage source was grounded it in, and, and it was tied between ground and uh, the three volt node, it effectively already constrained and defined the, uh, the voltage at node three for us. It was whatever the battery or the voltage source value was. Now it's a little bit different. We can't say that the voltage source constrains either node three or node one, but we can say that the voltage difference between node 3 and node 1 is constrained. So there is a constraining equation. So let's write that constraining equation. It's going to be V3 minus V1 is equal to 10 volts. So we don't know what either V1 or V3 is, but we know that it's, it constrains it. Now let's go ahead and try to just approach this problem like we would for any other nodal equ uh, problem. So we'll start by, and then we're going to encounter a problem at some point. So let's start at, um, let's do node uh, 2, because I know that one's not going to cause a problem. So here we go, we're going to look at current leaving the 5 ohm resistor, so that's going to be V2 minus V1 times 0.2 mos minus 10 amps and then uh, we'll have 0.1 times v2 minus v3 that's the current leaving to the right all of that is equal to zero let's uh, collect terms here so we've got um, 0.2 v1 and we have uh, 0.2 we have point 0.3 V2, and we have minus point 0.1 V3, and that is equal to 10 amps. Okay, now let's look at KCL at node 1. So we'll start with the current going down through the 10 ohms, so I have point 0.1 times V1. Current going to the right through the 5 ohms will be 0.2 V1 minus V2. And then the current flowing up through the source, we'll call that I10. Now I need to replace I10 with uh, an expression that involves the unknown voltages, V1, V2, V3. The problem is I can't. We can't ever express the current through a voltage source in terms of the voltage across it or any other voltage. So let's just hold on to that and let's move on to uh, node 3 and write a KCL equation there. So the current going down through the 5 ohms is going to be 0.2 times V3. The current to the left is going to, through the 10 ohm, is 0.1 times V3 minus V2. And then we have uh, not I10 leaving, but I10 entering. So we have minus I10 equal to zero. Now, we can't substitute anything for I10 at this point. But I want you to observe something. If we do the following, if I actually take these two KCL equations and I add them together, we're going to find that these will actually cancel. And they're both equalities, right? So adding two equalities is not going to break the equality. So this is still a valid statement. I haven't cheated here. So we've got 0.1 V1 plus 0.2 um, V1 
minus 0.2 v2, and then we have plus 0.2 v3, oops, plus 0.1 v3 minus 0.1 v2, and all of that is equal to zero. Uh, I just realized that went off the page. Okay, so let's collect terms. We have 0.1 uh, plus 0.2. Okay, let me just rewrite that. was 0.3 v1. Okay, v2, we have a minus 0.2 and a minus 0.1. So it's minus 0.3 v2. And then we have a plus 0.3 v3. Okay, now we have this equation here that is in v1, 2, and 3, and we have this initial KCL equation from node 2 here that is in terms of the same three unknown voltages, and we have a constraining equation that v1, v3 minus v1 is equal to 10 volts. So what we could do is we could rewrite uh, this constraint equation expressing V3 as 10 volts plus V1. And then we could go and plug V3 into these two equations. Right? And that will lead us to an e a two, two equations and two unknowns. So let's go ahead and, and do that. We'll take the first equation here second equation. So the first equation, put it up here, is, um, here I'll pause it and then write this out and I'll start it again. So after substituting in 10 volts plus V1 for V3 and rearranging that, we find that the first KCL equation around node 2, at node 2, uh, results in uh, this equation here, 0.1 V1 plus 0.3 V2 is equal to 11 amps. Now we can do the same thing for equation 2. And we'll have 0.3 V1 minus 0.3 V2 plus 0.3 times 10 volts minus V1, all equal to 0. So here we will have, uh, let's see, 0 V1 and minus 0.3 V2 plus 3 amps is equal to 0. And that right away leads us to V2 being equal to 10 volts. Oops, 10 volts, right? I just realized I made a mistake right here. There's a sign error where this should be plus based on this here. So that will give us a uh, 0.6 V1. So we're not going to be able to solve for V2 directly there. So we'll have 0.6 V1 minus 0.3 V2 is equal to minus 3 amps. And so now we have two equations and two unknowns. And from here, we can solve for V1 and V2. So what have we really done here? Um, let's go back to the circuit. I'm going to solve this one last time, a second time, but uh, use uh, a better method or, or a, actually just show you what this standard method is for dealing with a voltage source when it's bridging two nodes and you're doing nodal analysis. So first thing to notice is that um, although we typically do KCL at a node and we sum currents you know, that are leaving or entering, there's nothing that says we can't take something more than a node. So let's say that we, we draw a box around that and we have one branch, two branches, and a third branch. If we sum those three currents leaving, they have to add to zero by KCL. So KCL can be applied to um, really to any um, any circuit or network that we draw a box around. I could draw uh, a uh, 
a bubble around the whole circuit and say KCL is, is satisfied here. There's no current entering, there's no current in, leaving, so the currents that are entering sum to zero, etc. So what we're going to employ here is uh, that technique, and we're going to, um, instead of trying to write a nodal equation, a KCL equation at node 1, where we have to deal with the current I10, or trying to write a KCL equation at node 3, where we have to deal with the current that's entering um, from the 10 volt source, we are going to instead write one KCL equation for what we will call a supernode. And a supernode is this virtual node that will surround two nodes that are actually constrained by a voltage source that is connecting or bridging between them. Okay, so if you if we write a KCL equation for that supernode, and we'll call this node 1, 3, right, because it encompasses node 1 and 3, and so we'll write KCL at node 1, 3, and here we have 1, 2, 3, 4 currents leaving at that supernode. So what we have is V1 times 0.1 plus uh, the current through to the right through the 5 ohms is going to be 0.2 times V1 minus V2. The current flowing out to the left through the 10 ohms is going to be 0.1 times V3 minus V2. And lastly, we have 0.2 times V3. All of that is equal to zero. Now we'll combine terms. So we'll have 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 times V1 plus we'll have minus 0 0.2 minus 0 0.1 times V2 and then we have plus 0.3 times V3. So that results in 0.1 v, 0.3 v1 minus 0.3 v2 plus 0.3 v3. Now looking at this equation and comparing it to what we found right here, okay, these two are equal. And how did we get this first one? Recall what we did was we wrote KCL for around node 1 and we wrote it around node 3 and we defined this current IL or I10 it showed up with opposite signs in each of these equations and then we said hey how about if we add these together because after all they're both equalities and we'll add two equalities to retain an equality and that actually gave us this uh, one equation that we now uh, see showing up by way of uh, writing KCL for a supernode so I won't continue, I won't write, uh, go through writing KCL at node 2 again, but this will be exactly the same as before, and you will arrive at the same uh, two equations, and uh, of course you can then do the substitution where you take your constraining equation, V3 is equal to 10 volts plus V1, and plug that in here. So we can say V3 is equal to 10 volts plus V1, and that now reduces that equation to um, a, two unknowns, and we'll have our other KCL equation from writing KCL at node 2, and that will end up being in terms of V1 and V2, uh, now that we substitute 10 plus V1 for V3. So that is how you solve a nodal uh, circuit or solve a circuit using nodal analysis uh, when you have a voltage source that bridges two nodes. And I should point out that if this voltage source had been a dependent voltage source, okay, and here instead it would have been the same approach. Okay, same approach would have been used.